two years ago, almost to this exact day, something special was happening. It all started with a dream, a dream of traveling the world together on our adventure bikes. And after doing that for a few years, we started looking into something a little more comfortable. And before we knew it, we went from traveling the world on our adventure bikes to traveling the world in our adventure van and sharing this experience with you right here from wherever in the world you might be joining us from. We are Jim, Ember, and Cynthia. Thank you for joining us today as we take a look into where we've been, how we got here, and what's to come. From the west coast of the United States, to Canada, to Alaska, to the islands of Hawaii, we've been taking you along with us, and we had no clue what we were doing. But we all had to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. This is going to be the fun part of it. Is that sort of key? That's weird. Did you get two sets of keys? There's two keys on. Did you get it? No. Let's try it. Are they the right keys? <laughs> it's ours! After figuring out that minor detail and staying our first night in the dealership campground to work out any issues, we eagerly began our two year, 32,000 mile journey, easing our way up the Oregon coast towards the state of Alaska. The Oregon coast had been on the top of our list to explore because of the beauty in the drive alone. By accident, we discovered America's largest sea lion cave, and it was here that it really sunk in as to all the great things that we're about to see. I'll never forget boondocking that first night. Listening to the frogs sing, Jim put his arms around me and said, can you believe this is our life now? In all of our time, that first night on the road is one that I will never forget. And then we truly entered the season of spring flowers for days. But despite the weather, we couldn't pass up the Tulip Festival in Mount Vernon. We then eagerly crossed over into Canada, and we have to say to our Canadian friends, we love everything about your country. Your hospitality, the wildlife, the breweries, and the boondocking opportunities, they're almost limitless, especially as we explored the old Alaska Highway. We took our time visiting your beautiful country, and after taking in only a portion of all that Canada has to offer, we made plans to return the following summer to explore Eastern Canada. In May, 
we crossed the border back into Alaska to pick Ember up, introduced her to the van, and knocked out a few do-it-yourself projects, like a much-needed mattress upgrade and Havelock wool insulation. We learned other lessons that summer on the drive to Tuktoyaktuk, like a spare tire costs $500 in the small village of Anubik. So we had a great time here in Dawson City, met up with some friends and just spent the day relaxing. It was really nice to take a day off of driving for a little bit and Ember did really well. She made a new friend of Maggie and they had fun playing together. And now we're getting ready to head back to Alaska over the top of the world highway. We're going to convoy with van trekking and a couple of our other friends that we met. So this will be a fun little drive. We'll put the drone up at some point and get some beautiful shots once we cross the border into Alaska. It's been a lot of fun. We still got a long way to go, but we're headed to Tok. And once again, we hit the road to fall in love with Alaska in ways that we could never imagine. We spent that summer exploring with our friends Owen and Lynn from Van Trekking Lifestyles, creating memories that would last a lifetime. Sitting lazily by the Chena River just outside of Fairbanks on a balmy 90 degree Alaskan summer day. We also explored glaciers calving in Valdez on the Lulu Bell. Owen caught his first salmon and we took them to an old mining town in Hatcher's Pass. Winter camping and photographing the Northern Lights was on our bucket list, and we wanted to immerse ourselves into exploring Alaska in all extremes. And in doing so, we were preparing ourselves and our lives to venture even further into the unknown. The summer flew by, and before we knew it, our winter hit, and we thought we were prepared, but we weren't. Our first winter in the van taught us lessons, like there's this extra fluid in the diesel engines called diesel exhaust fluid, otherwise known as DEF. DEF has the potential to freeze at minus 12 degrees Fahrenheit, causing the sprinter to go into limp mode and not start. And we didn't know that. Turning around and driving 200 miles south to warmer zero degree temperatures fixed the issue and we haven't experienced it since. Here we go. Start number five. Five? Yep. Okay. Did it go away? Went away. What? And when long, dark winter days started to really get to us, we did what any true Alaskan does in the winter, and we went south to Hawaii. And we took you along with us to explore the island of Maui. Witnessing a side to island life that we've never seen before. Camping in our revel from our friends at Maui Van Life at 10,000 feet in elevation, and spending several days feeling like we were visiting another planet not another island. The benefits of exploring the island this way is your home is where you park it. We were able to completely eliminate the need for a condominium or a rental car or an Uber after a night on the town or a long day at the beach. Our greatest lesson learned here is to stay in designated campgrounds such as Haleakala State Park, where in one day we went from sitting on the beach to 10,000 feet above sea level. Standing on a volcano, experiencing what it feels like to literally have your head in the clouds. To date, our time spent in the revel on Maui was one of the coolest experiences we've had outside of the state of Alaska. From Eugene, Oregon, Canada, 
the Alaska Highway, and the Dempster and Dalton Highways, and of course Maui, we finished out our Alaskan winter and the Vandemic summer out in the wilds of Alaska. Pulling halibut and rockfish off the ocean floor in Seward. Picking wild blueberries and raspberries for our oatmeal off the tundra. Making jelly and honey out of fireweed. And catching fish from the river and putting it straight into the pan for dinner. All the while, sitting at the bottom of an Alaskan glacier. Every six months we've been sharing our thoughts on our van, performance upgrades, comfort upgrades, while sharing our travels with you every Sunday morning. The stories we've made up together around the campfire, the rivers Ember has swam in, and the countless stars that we've wished upon, we're not ready for this to end, and we hope you aren't either. Which brings us to this past winter, where we were supposed to leave Alaska in October, but exploring Canada is over half the fun and we had no legitimate reason to cross the border. So we waited it out and remained in Alaska. And we made the best of it by picking up skiing again and chasing the Northern Lights. And there you have it. Two years of this journey in under 20 minutes and we're just getting started because now we have a new opportunity. We have been on pause, and now we can finally press play again, which is both exciting and scary at the same time. Our goal is to go as far as the pavement will take us, meet as many people as we can along the way, and take you with us along for the ride. Subscribing to our channel helps support us, and it's free, so double check that you've subscribed, hit that like button, and leave us a guess in the comment section below as to where you think we might be headed next. Now, let's hit the road.